So this is going to be a real quick tutorial on how to use Machine as a plugin in Ableton Live. Um, we're going to look at how you can use MIDI tracks in Live to trigger uh, different instruments in Machine and also how you can separate the output of Machine down different audio tracks in Ableton Live. So first up, what we need to do is go Plugin Devices Native Instruments Machine, just load Machine as uh, a plugin onto a MIDI track. Now Machine behaves uh, just as it does in standalone mode, so we can now use the Machine hardware to access sound samples and instruments. Uh, and create a, a machine project but inside Ableton Live. You notice that the play button doesn't work in machine because Ableton Live is, is sort of the host program so you'd need to use the transport controls in Ableton Live. So if I just hit the space bar you can see that machine is now playing and so is uh, Ableton Live. The, the uh, bar counter in Ableton Live is ticking over. I'm going to load a group of sounds, um, group A, browse, group, I'll just load an 808 kit. Let's just program a, a pattern for that. So I've turned the metronome on in Ableton Live, hit play, just turn record quantization on, obviously knock machine into record. And then when you're done, you can hit the space bar. So every time I hit the space bar, it's going to launch whichever pattern I've got currently highlighted for each of machines group. So if I just select pattern number two, you can see we get that sort of effect. What we can do though is export that pattern that I've created into my Ableton Live set and create myself a, a MIDI clip. Now to do this I'm just going to press this button here which brings up this dialog box called the Sound MIDI Batch Setup. I'm going to select Sound to MIDI Notes, click Apply, I'm going to click and hold a, a second time on this button and you can see that I can now drag that pattern out and there's the pattern that I've just created in Machine but viewed as a MIDI clip in Ableton Live. I'm just going to select a different, different pattern and then launch this pattern. If I simply launch this pattern I'll have it playing twice and we might get some weird phase type effects. I'm just going to select a blank pattern in fact, I could just right click the pattern up here in the uh, scene arrangement just to remove that pattern altogether. And now you can see that that uh, MIDI clip is triggering Group A for me. What this means is um, I can make myself a blank MIDI clip and I can program a MIDI clip in Ableton Live to trigger Group A in Machine.
Now that's all well and good if you're just wanting to trigger one of Machine's instruments uh, from Ableton Live, but if you want to trigger more than one instrument, then um, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Uh, the first way, in fact, is to rather than export a MIDI pattern across so that we're triggering that machine instrument in real time, what we can do is convert that pattern. Uh, we sort of bounce it and turn it into an audio waveform, which we can then import into live. So to do this, this little drop down menu here, where it says pattern drag mode, rather than having MIDI selected, which is what we've done previously, I'm going to select audio. Now what happens when I click and hold the mouse button down on that same button that we used to drag the pattern over, it bounces that drum pattern for us and changes it into an audio file. Problem with doing this is you can see, because of the way Ableton Live works, is that it might have incorrectly time warped that resulting audio file. So what we would need to do, obviously that original pattern that created was only one bar long. And then what we've got to do is just place an additional warp marker, stretch that out so it'll play in time. So not, not ideal. Um, perhaps a better workaround um, would be to create some uh, new tracks from which we can trigger machines instruments in real time that also means that um, we've got more flexibility with regards to applying effects or processes to the sound there's only so much we can do with this resulting audio file whereas we can still if we're triggering the instruments in real, real time go in and tweak any parameters on the instrument itself or add any extra effects and processes like i said if we feel the need to so in fact i'm just going to delete that uh, audio file altogether I'm going to move over to the next machine group. I'm going to browse for a sound. Just go for some sort of bass instrument. Something like that, that'll do. What I'm going to do is right click and insert a MIDI track. Now what I'm going to do is use this MIDI track to program patterns or MIDI clips that I'm then going to trigger that instrument with in real time. So I'm going to go input output routing where it says MIDI 2. I'm going to select machine. And from this lower chooser box, you can see that I've got 16 available MIDI channels on which I can transmit MIDI information back to machine. So each connection, each MIDI connection can carry up to 16 different channels of MIDI information to trigger up to 16 different instruments. So the MIDI connection in this case is the USB lead attached to the back of your uh, machine hardware it can carry up to 16 different MIDI tracks. So if you remember from the first part of this video, we're already making use of MIDI channel 1 to trigger the drums in real time. So what I'm going to do is select MIDI channel 2 this time. So now that we've selected for that MIDI channel to transmit MIDI information on MIDI channel 2 over to machine, I need to now tell machine that I want uh, my new bass instrument to be receiving MIDI information on channel 2. So I just want to talk a little bit more about this uh, sound MIDI setting. You've got two options. Um, if you use this drop down menu here, you've got this thing called sound MIDI batch setup, which is what we looked at for the drums on group A. If you right click or control click on the individual sound slot, you can see you get a slightly different thing called sound MIDI settings. So sound MIDI batch setup is MIDI settings for the entire group. Whereas if you right click or control click on the individual sound slot, it will give you the MIDI settings for that particular sound slot. So let's just go back over to group A, drop down menu, sound MIDI batch setup. So what we could have done is send each individual sound slot, in other words, each individual drum, uh, to an individual MIDI channel. So you've got 16 sound slots, 16 MIDI channels. And so if you add 16 
MIDI tracks in live, each transmitting on a different MIDI channel, each of those individual tracks would trigger one of those drums. And in fact, you could play different pitches of drums on each of those different tracks, but it's not always what you want to achieve uh, with a drum kit. What it's um, what you want to do more often than not is have each of those sounds triggered by one MIDI channel and just use the different pitches on a keyboard to play the different drums rather than different pitches of one drum. So that's why we selected sounds to MIDI notes. We selected MIDI channel one for the drums and the root note is basically where the drum kit starts playback. So C3 will trigger the kick drum, the first sound in that drum kit. So that's sound MIDI batch setup. And that is settings for an entire group. Let me just cancel that. Let's move back over to group B. Like I say, I'm going to control click or right click on the individual sound slot and go sound MIDI settings. So I'm going to enable this and the input MIDI channel, I'm going to select number two so it, that it correlates with uh, this MIDI channel here. I'm going to select OK. And now you can see that that MIDI channel is, or rather that track in Ableton Live is transmitting MIDI over to machine and it's triggering that instrument. I'm just going to do this for one more instrument, something with a bit more uh, treble content in it, some higher frequencies, maybe a pad or something. This time I've created a new MIDI track and I've selected for it to transmit on MIDI channel 3. Now I could just load a new uh, sound or instrument onto the next sound slot in group B, but just to keep things separate and easier to decipher. I'm going to move over to the next group, group C. Right click on that amped clavinet, sound MIDI settings, enable and just correlate that channel, so number three. So that's how to have different MIDI channels in live, triggering different MIDI instruments in machine. We can take this one step further, however. You can see that the audio output of machine at the moment is uh, coming down channel one in Ableton Live. So each of those three instruments, the drum kit, the bass instrument, and the clavinet key uh, that I've got on the go there, it's all coming down channel one at the moment. Now what we can still do is add processes and effects within uh, the instance of machine itself. But what happens if we wanted to treat the different instruments that I've got going on with some of Ableton Live's native uh, devices? 
at the moment, if I apply one of Ableton Live's effects to Machine Channel 1, it's going to uh, affect each of the sounds that I've got going on. What we can do, however, is use a live device called External Instrument. And I'm going to drag one of these onto MIDI Channel 2 and one of them onto MIDI Channel 3. But just to keep things decipherable, I'm just going to rename these tracks. So what we need to do is to separate out the audio output of machine so that the bass is coming down the bass track in Ableton Live and the keys is coming down the key track. Now what the external instrument uh, device allows you to do is to send MIDI out and then tell Live where you want that track to receive audio from. So I'm going to send it to, well I've renamed that track, it was called Machine, I've now called it Drums, but that is where the machine device is located. So I'm going to select Drums and remember Channel 2, MIDI Channel 2 is the MIDI channel which is being received for the bass. And as far as audio returned to this external instrument device goes, I can leave this as three and four, and we'll see how to uh, correlate that up with the actual machine instance in a moment. And then on the keys, external instrument, I'm gonna go MIDI output to drums again, this time channel three, and then audio from, I'm gonna select five and six. Now at the moment you can see that um, the MIDI has been sent to the correct place because we're still hearing those instruments but the audio output is still concentrated down channel 1 or track 1. So I'm going to go over to the machine hardware now, let's come out of browse mode and let's go group B first, the bass, and I'm going to press button number 8, output. This is where we choose the output for this particular sound or group. So in fact, you could either, it doesn't really matter in this case, because we've got one instrument on group B, one instrument on group C, it doesn't matter whether you're affecting the output of the group or the sound. Uh, so for argument's sake, I'm just gonna select sound, where it says output, rotary control number one. going to select output 2 and you can see now how the bass has been siphoned off and it's been sent down track 2 in Ableton Live. Let's now do that for the clavinet. I'm going to go output and this time where it says output I'm going to select output 3. You can see now that that has been sent down track three. So what this means now is, say for example, I wanted to add some ping pong delay to the keys, Ableton Live's native ping pong delay. can do so. So the external instrument device, you can send MIDI out to a location of your choosing, in this case machine, and then you can return an audio signal back again from, uh, from machine in this case. So that's how you can use Ableton Live and machine together and use separate tracks in Ableton Live to trigger different instruments to separate out the audio output from your machine instance and it saves you having to use a new instance of machine on each new uh, instrument track, MIDI track.